Hello, hello, Kelly again. Welcome to problem 1.22. For the vectors A and B in figure E 1.22, which is this one right here, use a scale drawing to find the magnitude and direction of A, the vector sum, A plus B. B, the vector difference, A minus B. Use your answers to find the magnitude and direction of negative A minus B and B minus A. Okay, so they want us to use a scale drawing, which is what we do when we take the vectors and we stick them tip to tail or tail to tail, depending if you're adding or subtracting. So let's see if this works. So first one, A, we want A plus B. So I'm gonna draw over this bad boy. See if I can move him over. So can I do that? Is that a thing that I can do? <laughs> Dope. Okay, so that's vector A. And we want plus vector B. So let's trace vector B over here. Do, do. Okay. Huh. Neat. Okay, so vector A plus B. So when we are adding vectors together, we take them tip to tail. So we're going to leave A alone. We're going to take B. We're going to take the tail of B and stick it on the end of vector A. And then our resultant Where's my colors? All right, so then our resultant is going to be from where you started. Aha, there we go. Let's change to pink. It's gonna be from where we started to where we ended. Boop. Just like that. So this pink one is the vector A plus Ta-da! Okay, so that's how we draw the picture showing what A plus B looks like. So now we want to break it down and look at how do we do that mathematically. So this gets into breaking your vectors up into X and Y components, which I think you covered briefly in lecture, like right towards the end. So what we want to do first is let's write our vectors in component form. So vector A has zero piece in the x direction. So that's zero in the x direction. So i hat means in the x direction. And 100% in the y direction, negative. So that's going to be negative 8.00 meters downward, so j hat. Vector b, on the other hand, we have at an angle. So we want to break this up into the legs, the legs of a triangle, if you will. So the x direction, the way that this is oriented from our 30 degrees, that's going to be sine. So the magnitude of my vector is 15.0 meters. The x direction is going to be sine of 30 degrees. I had. And it's pointing to the right, so that's going to be positive. All right, let's change to another color. Uh, let's do green. Okay, so now we want to look at the y component of b. So what we're really doing here is we're finding out the, the legs, the length of the legs that the triangle makes. So our y component here is going to be our 15 meters, 15.0 meters, and that's going to be cosine of 30 degrees. So this is something that I want to point out. Um, X is not always going to be cosine and Y is not always going to be sine. It depends on what angle you are working with. 
So keep that in mind and don't just memorize like, oh, X is magnitude cosine theta. That's only if they gave us this one. But since they gave us this one, it's actually sine. So it's important to pay attention to where your angles are at and which trig function is gonna tell you that. All right, so our Y component is the adjacent leg. So that means we're using cosine of 30 degrees. We're pointing upwards. So that's gonna be positive. So to add these two things together, we just directly add up the components. So zero i hat plus 15 sine 30 i hat gives me 15 sine 30. I don't have my unit circle memorized because I'm a slacker. So that's gonna wait until the end. And then in the y direction, we have negative eight j hat plus 15 cos 30 j hat. So let's just stick this all together. So you have negative eight meters plus 15 cosine 30 degrees j hat. All right, so now if I punch this into my handy dandy calculator, 15 times the sine of 30 is uh, 7.5. Cool, so sine 30 is a half. I knew it was one of those special ones, but I couldn't remember which one. Don't mind me. Okay, so 7.5 i hat, and then we have negative eight plus 15 cosine 30 is going to be plus 4.99, so we're gonna round that to five j hat. Okay, so a nice way to double check is if we take this vector, our pink one that we were working with. And we come sticking back on the original graph over there. Okay, then we can see approximately where that vector is gonna end up. So it should be a little bit further. Uh, it should be exactly where B ends because B is the only thing contributing to the X component. So that tracks. And then it's gonna be lower than the Y component of B because A is bringing it down. So it's lower, sweet. So our I component, our X component, our I hat is 7.5 and we go up five. So this would be the unit vector notation of that resultant vector. Alrighty. So now if we wanna find the magnitude, the way that we would do that is you good old, use good old Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of A plus B so these vertical bars on the sides of our vectors represent magnitude. There's gonna be the square root of our X component squared. Oops, let me stick my units in there. Oops, meters, meters. Don't forget your units, bad practice, my bad. 7.5 meters squared plus five meters squared. Punch that into our handy dandy calculator. 7.5 squared plus five squared, all square rooted is 9.01 meters. All right. So everybody that we have here is three sig figs. So, bam. Okay, so then to get the angle, we can use trig. So if we make a big triangle from our, 
So we know this is 0 0.91 meters. We know this is 7.5 meters. And we know that this is 5.0 meters. The general convention for direction on your vectors is measured from the positive x-axis. So that would be this angle here. So all of these angles are not standard convention. So if you're just going to give uh, an angle, um, if you don't specify where it's measured from, it's assumed it's the positive x-axis. So like this one over here, the 30 degrees, we would say 30 degrees east of the north or 30 degrees from the positive y-axis into the positive x direction. Like you need to be hyper-specific about where your angles are being measured from. Anyways, so now that we have the magnitude, we can use any trig function to figure out what this angle is. Uh, personally, I'm a fan of inverse tangent. So we know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is our five meters. Adjacent is our 7.5 meters. So if we take the inverse tangent of both sides, tan minus one, tan minus one, tan cancels out, leaves us with theta is equal to the inverse tangent of five meters over 7.5 meters, kapla. And if we punch that into our handy dandy calculator, our uh, inverse tan of five over 7.5, boom, that's an eight, not a five, okay gives us 33.69 degrees. And since we've got three sig figs, 33.7 degrees. All righty. We're gonna make a separate one for part B because this was long and you might wanna break it up.